This is a GCSE chemistry tutorial within topic 7. Today we will be looking at the alkanes and the alkenes. So what is a hydrocarbon? Well a hydrocarbon is a compound that is only made up of hydrogen and carbon molecules. They are not to be confused with the homologous series, although they do feature. For more information on homologous series, please look at that video. However, in this video, we're going to look at two hydrocarbons. The first group are the alkanes and the second are the alkenes. We have some examples here. We've got methane, CH4, ethene, C2H4, propane, C3H8, etc. They only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms. Hydrocarbons fall under the larger bracket of organic chemistry and it is very important that you are able to count in organic chemistry. And you need to be able to count to four. One is meth. This relates to the number of carbons in the chain. So one is meth or meth. Two carbons in the chain gives us eth or eth. Three carbons gives us prop or prop. And finally, four gives us bute. This will be the same for all aspects of the organic module, regardless of if you are taking double science or triple science. First of all, we will look at the alkanes. The alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. What does this mean? Well, hydrocarbons, as we've just looked at, are molecules that are made up of only hydrogen and carbon. Saturated means that all of these atoms are held together by single covalent bonds. For example, ethane or butane. Ethane, C2H6. Butane, C4H10. Alkanes are pretty unreactive, but they do burn very well. In particular, they can undergo both complete and incomplete combustion. The general formula for an alkane is CnH2n plus 2. Using the general formula, we can work out the number of hydrogens, providing that we already know the number of carbons. As methane has one carbon, meth meaning one, we can make N1. If we were then to do 2 times 1 plus 2, this would give us 4, C1H4, which is the formula for methane. This will work regardless of the size of the alkane. But where do we find these alkanes? Alkanes come from crude oil. Crude oil is a fossil fuel that was formed from remains of plants and animals, mainly plankton, that died millions of years ago. This was then converted into crude oil over a long period of time. We can then drill this up predominantly from under the sea. It is also a non-renewable fuel. Crude oil is a big mixture with lots of different hydrocarbons in, most of which are alkanes. In order to separate these, we need to use fractional distillation. So how does fractional distillation work? Well, to start off with, the crude oil is heated to a very high temperature, above 350 degrees Celsius. At this point, it completely boils and enters the distillation column as a gas. As we go up the chamber, it gets cooler. There this means there is a temperature gradient as we go up the column. The column is warmest at the bottom and coolest at the top. Larger molecules have the highest boiling point, so they condense first where the column is much warmer. For example, the residue will condense very, very quickly and turn into a liquid. At each point, we can tap off the required fraction as it has turned from being a gas into a liquid. Smaller molecules have a lower boiling point, so they only condense where it's cooler in the fractioning column, so they will condense much, much higher up. This allows us to separate out the different fractions of crude oil before using each fraction to make specific products. 
Here is a more detailed diagram showing the different fractions. So at the bottom we have the residue or bitumen which is used for roads and it boils at a very very high temperature so it is the first to condense. It is also the longest chain. As we move up we have lubricating oil, fuel oil and diesel. Diesel is used for trucks. Then have paraffin, also known as kerosene, which is used for airplane fuel. Naphtha, which is used in the chemical industry. Petrol or gasoline, which is used for cars. And then finally, at the top, we have LPG, which is liquefied petroleum gas. This is mainly propane and butane and is used for cooking gas, for example, in barbecues. It is still a gas at room temperature, and so it leaves the column right at the top. The length of the carbon chain can affect its properties. Short chain molecules have low boiling points, they are highly volatile and they are very soft. Longer chains are much higher in boiling point and they are often brittle but not always. Shorter chain molecules are often less viscous so they're less sticky than much longer chains are. Here are two potential examination style questions. The first looks at the properties of the hydrocarbon related to its length and the second is about fractional distillation. I want you to pause the video now and attempt these two questions. So for our two questions, the first one, larger molecules have a higher boiling point they form liquids at room temperature and they're more viscous. Shorter molecules have a lower boiling point but are more flammable or volatile and they form gases at room temperature. For our second question, crude oil is heated until it becomes a gas, at which point it enters the column. As it rises, the larger molecules condense first as the temperature is higher at the base of the column. Smaller molecules condense last as the temperature is lowest at the top of the column. Shorter chain hydrocarbons are flammable and make good fuel, so they're much higher in demand. Long chain hydrocarbons aren't that useful, so often they are turned into smaller, more useful ones in a process called cracking. Cracking is the breaking down of long chain alkanes into smaller useful alkanes as well as alkenes. We will look at alkenes later on in this video. There are different methods of carrying out cracking. Cracking is a thermal decomposition reaction. This means we're breaking molecules down by heating them. The first step is to heat long chain hydrocarbons to vaporise them. So this long chain alkane will therefore be a gas. The vapour is passed over a hot powdered aluminium oxide catalyst. What this causes is for the molecules to split apart and this process is known as catalytic cracking. We can also crack hydrocarbons if we mix them with steam after vaporising them and then heating them to exceptionally high temperatures. This method is known as steam cracking. Regardless of if you are using catalytic or steam cracking, you are taking your long chain alkane and converting it into a shorter chain alkane and a small alkene. The second organic family you need to know are the alkenes. The alkenes are different to alkanes in that they contain a double covalent bond. This is a bond that has two shared pairs of electrons. For example, instead of ethane, we have ethene. We can see its double bond here. Instead of butane, we have butene. Again, we have our double bond. This double bond means that alkenes have the potential to join with other molecules. This makes them much more reactive, which we will look at later on in this video. Just like with alkanes, we can give alkenes a general formula. Their general formula is CnH2n. In this case, if we take ethene, which is the smallest of the alkenes, we can't have methene because we need two carbons to form a double bond. If we take ethene, our number of carbons, our eth, is 2. So n equals 2. 
2n is 2 times 2, which is 4. So C2H4, which is our formula for ethene. You do need to be able to work out both formulas for alkenes and alkanes. As we look at in the homologous series video, chemicals that share a homologous series, so the alkanes as a family or the alkenes as a family, have the same general formula and they show a gradual variation in a property. For example, increased boiling points as you get larger. However, they also have similar chemical properties. You need to be able to test if you have an alkene or an alkane. The easiest way to do so is to test for saturation. Saturated means full up, so therefore alkanes are saturated. This means that the molecule contains no double bonds and the maximum number of atoms are added. Alkenes, on the other hand, are unsaturated. They are not full up and therefore have a double bond. To test for this, we can use bromine water. Bromine water is bromine that has been dissolved into water. In order to test for saturation, we can use bromine water. This is because bromine will react with an alkene, however it will not react with an alkane. This is due to the presence of the double bond. Here we have ethene, C2H4, and we can see its double bond. When it reacts with bromine, bromine is able to attack the double bond. In doing so, one of the bromine atoms, as we have Br2, so two are present, one of them will bond with the left-hand side carbon and one with the right. This forms the molecule dibromoethane. This reaction can only happen with an alkene, so an unsaturated hydrocarbon, due to the presence of the double bond. We can use this as an easy test because we get a colour change. Bromine water is an orange colour. When we add it to an alkane, there will be no reaction and therefore the bromine water will remain orange. However, if we add bromine water to an alkene, so an unsaturated hydrocarbon, then as we have seen, the bromine is able to react with the double bond. This makes the colourless dibromo compound so the bromine water is decolorized. We get a colour change. This addition of a halogen can also be done with both chlorine, Cl2, forming dichloroethane, or it can also be done with fluorine or iodine. Adding something across a double bond is known as an addition reaction. We're going to look at two other addition reactions that we can carry out with alkenes. The next addition reaction is known as hydrogenation. This is where we add hydrogen across the double bond, converting an unsaturated alkene into a saturated alkane. In this reaction, the alkene is reacted with hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. This is sometimes known as catalytic hydrogenation. The final addition reaction you need to know is the reaction of alkenes with steam. In this reaction, the addition is of water. This converts the alkene into an alcohol. For example, ethanol
This method of producing ethanol is looked at further in the alcohols and carboxylic acid tutorial. However, it is important to note that alcohol and carboxylic acids is a triple science only topic. The final alkene reaction that you need to know for GCSE is polymerization. Because alkenes have a double bond, they can be broken to form new bonds. Therefore, we can attach many alkenes together to make a long chain molecule called a polymer. We will look at polymers in much more depth in the next video where we will look at both addition and condensation polymers. The final topic we need to look at for alkenes and alkanes is combustion. Combustion will be looked at in more detail in the atmosphere topic. However, we do need to be able to link it to both alkenes and alkanes. In order for combustion to occur, then we need the fire triangle to be complete. The fire triangle is oxygen, it is a source of energy, and we've got our fuel. Both alkenes and alkanes can be used as this fuel. Alkanes are able to undergo both complete and incomplete combustion. However, it is much more likely that they will go through complete combustion. Complete combustion occurs when there is plenty of oxygen. In this, we have our alkane, for example, methane, plus our oxygen producing carbon dioxide and water. This means that alkanes burn with a clean flame. Alkenes, on the other hand, burn with a smoky flame. In a large amount of oxygen, alkenes are able to combust completely. However, there often isn't enough oxygen, and in fact, in our air at 21% oxygen, there is not enough oxygen. So when we burn them, they undergo incomplete combustion. In this, we still produce carbon dioxide and water, but we also produce carbon and carbon monoxide. As we will look at in the atmosphere topic, carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. This incomplete combustion results in a smoky yellow flame and less energy being released compared to the complete combustion of the same compound. You need to be able to write both word and symbol equations for both alkanes and their complete combustion and the incomplete combustion of alkenes. For your alkanes, we have CH4, which is methane, plus 2O2 goes to CO2 and 2H2O. And an example for our alkenes would be C4H8, which would be butene, plus 5O2 goes to 2CO, that's our carbon monoxide, plus 2CO2, that's our carbon dioxide, and 4H2O, which is our water. This would be one example and one possibility for what could happen. However, the products depend on how much oxygen is present. We could also have C4H8 plus 3O2, so reducing the amount of oxygen, which would form two carbons, two carbon monoxides, and four water. We would not get the production of any carbon dioxide in this. In the next video, we will look at polymers, looking at addition polymers, which link into alkenes, as well as the triple only topic of condensation polymers.